Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. A while back, I did a video on the uh, Duratool um, stainless steel knives that were produced by Camillus. And I had mentioned that the only one that seemed to have managed to uh, make it to present day was the Hawkbill. And uh, it went into the Smith & Wesson line. Smith & Wesson also turned it into a uh, Marlin spike knife. Uh, regretfully, uh, the one Hawkbill that I did have, I actually did give away. I thought I had two of them. If I do have a second one, I really can't find it. But I did find some other knives that I was looking for while I was looking for the uh, uh, Smith & Wesson Hawkbill. I'll show that to you later. Uh, but I did mention that the uh, it went from Duratool by Camillus to the Smith & Wesson uh, Cut & Horse lineup to the Marbles GI knives. And this is the uh, Marbles uh, GI Hawkbill. Um, I don't believe this knife was ever actually a GI issued knife, but that's beside the point. Um, a lot of things are different on this knife compared to the Duratool one, and you can spot one of them right away, and that is the uh, the way the scales are done. Um, this is dramatically different, and it's actually different than uh, to a degree than you find on the other two GI knives, but they definitely do have more of a diamond cut going into there. And then they have the U.S. there instead of marbles. Um, notice Smith & Wesson um, Duratool. The only uh, one that was stamped U.S. by the uh, by Camillus was the uh, was the um, GI knife, which is what uh, marbles calls it. It was the old uh, military knife or the MIL-K818. Uh, often called a demo knife. In any case, so let's take a look at this one real quick and then we'll take a look at these two and um, a cousin to those two. And so what do you got with this knife? Um, first of all, if you notice that blade, let's get it open. That is one heck of a mirror polish going on on this blade. I, I'm really impressed with just how shiny the blade is. Uh, you do have the uh, Marbles uh, logo there. See, look at that. Isn't that not shiny? Definitely shiny. And got the Marbles Tang stamp. Backside will give you the number of the MR409 out of China. And you have the very heavy uh, scales going on here with the U.S. stamped in there. Obviously... That was just to get it all in line up with the uh, GI knives that they have made so far. But what I noticed on this one is it has a few things the other two don't have. Number one, it's got the uh, nice swedge going on there with the uh, with the uh, hawkbill blade, and it's a pretty strong hawkbill blade too. It's not at all that thin. I think it is. Uh, this is the original Duratool. A little thinner than the original Duratool. Definitely thinner than what you had on the, uh, the Smith & Wesson. You can see the difference there. But still, not that bad. And um, the swedge really gives you a good point up there. So you can do some uh, um, scribing if you need to. And... Um, Right out of the box, I would say it's not as sharp as it should be, but it's not bad either. There's definitely no wobble in the blade or anything like that. You've got a pretty decent half stop, which is good considering how strong the uh, liner lock is because you've got to push that out of the way, bring the blade up. The half stop will, might save you a finger or so. This can move in, uh, the, in the path of the blade, but... Really, you have the half stop, so if you've really got it to the half stop, you should be able to get it out of the way. Um, not a really strong snap closing, though. Um, but you do have a pretty strong back spring, so it is a little bit to pull open. The hardest part is getting it to the half spot. Half stop area, rather. Is getting it to the half stop. 
Okay. And uh, you can see there a little bit of gapping going on and everything else. But you also have to remember these knives go for about seven, eight dollars. So they're not expensive knives. The Smith and Wesson knives uh, were about the same price. And you can see here the lineup of everything is not that good on the Smith and Wessons. Now. The reason I was bringing out the uh, Smith & Wesson um, um, Marlin Spike is because this actually is the same as the Smith & Wesson Marlin Spike. This went through the Colt lineup and is now available in Marbles. This is the uh, Colt version of it. And um, you notice what they did was they gave it a proper sheep foot blade instead of the hawkbill blade. You got a bit of a swedge going on at the top up here too. Nice uh, grind going on with this. This is a nice hollow grind. And you've got the liner lock going on. And as you can tell, basically it's the same frame. The only difference is, is they added some G10 to the, uh, the um, cover. Now I wish what uh, marbles would do is get rid of the goofy G10 on there and just throw it into the USGI lineup. You know, and they could do that easy enough because all they did was put G10 on the uh, Smith & Wesson version of this. And this is basically right off of the Smith & Wesson also or the Duratool line. So if they were to take this remove the black 210 stamp it us you would have the uh, the uh, gi marlin spike knife in this same lineup too this one is close but not quite the same the other two you've got in there is the gi knife or the gi utility knife or gi camp knife whatever they call it and this is basically the copy of the uh of the demo knife or the milk knife um much chunkier than a regular demo knife. I already went over this before. Uh, and then this knife, I saw this one. This one was a, uh, I don't remember what they called it, but it was also a GI utility knife of some kind. You got the big uh, uh, can opener going on with it. And then the sheep foot blade. And this is actually a copy of an Italian utility knife. You got the uh, screwdriver tip up at the top here. So this is a copy of an Italian um, utility knife, also in the GI series. But two knives or three knives that I think they should be adding into the GI series besides these and uh, taking this and throwing it into the GI series also, well, well, first off is um, the Duratool Journeyman, um, which is the electrician knife. They've already used, uh, they have electrician knives in the Rough Rider lineup. And um, at some point in time, Marbles also had some electrician knives out there. So it would be easy for them to take and um, put this into the GI lineup to make a, a GI linesman knife. Um, off of the uh, same frame and that would bring back the uh, Duratool lineup of a uh, electrician knife or journeyman so that would be one that, to bring in to the uh, US uh, GI knives is the uh, electrician knife or the linesman knife um, and then and then the other one they should bring in is what is commonly referred to as the water knife but uh, when it was in the Duratool lineup, it was the workhorse, and I think they should bring back the GI workhorse and uh, do it like it was in the Duratool lineup, which would mean also adding a uh, clevis to the end of it because uh, the original uh, Duratool workhorse also had a clevis on it, which would be good. And this, I think, would be one of the more popular knives to do it with, with considering it's got the uh, little cap lifter screwdriver there and you've got a nice little clip blade there and there is a precedence uh, or precedence for having this knife in the gi lineup because during world war ii a knife very similar to this was uh, sold 
uh, through the uh, PX uh, as a, uh, you know, just a, an alternative carry for uh, GIs and uh, sailors and so on and so forth. So that would be a great knife to add into the um, Marvel's GI series. And finally, bring in the emergency toothpick, which was uh, used by the uh, Army Air Force and also by uh, U.S. Navy uh, pilots during World War II. Uh, you know, put the uh, stainless steel covers on this, stamp it U.S. Uh, you've got the liner lock down the middle, and then you've got the uh, single-bladed fish knife going on there. And you got the clevis at the top, so that would be a pretty cool knife to uh, see done um, in this cover. And you could still stamp it right at the bottom there, hook remover, U.S. there. I think this would be a great addition to something like this. And, uh, well, Marbles has made 5-inch toothpicks in the past. Uh, so has uh, Smoky Mountain Knife, or I'm sorry, uh, so has uh, Rough Rider. So I don't see why this knife couldn't also end up in the... Uh, Marvel's GI series. In any case, uh, that's my thoughts on the uh, Marvel's GI series. It's got some interesting knives in it. Um, most of them are more fantasy than uh, than truth. The only one I think that is based on uh, anything ever being used by the United States military um, is the uh, the original GI knife. Like I mentioned, this one is used, was something similar to this, was used by the Italian army. Um, and while I'm sure there were hawkbills used by the military, it was not like that. In any case, it'd be nice to see some more knives entered into that series. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pies. I really do appreciate it and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.